Guys, five by five goblin caves is back, which means that you have both the cyclops and the cave troll on the same map. And warlock is able to kill both of them at level one with no gear. And I'm going to teach you exactly how to do that. A zero gear warlock guide for both cyclops and cave troll. Then afterwards, I'm going to equip some mid-level gear for warlock. And I'm going to show you the new technique to kill cyclops with gear using both torture mastery, curse of pain and life drain hydra it is a doozy and makes it so much safer as warlock so hopefully you learn a lot in this goblin caves boss killing guide let's get started and i'll create a level one warlock for this video i'll call it like and subscribe i'm watching him okay head on over to the class tab once you're in the lobby to change your perk we're going to change our perk to torture mastery this is the best way to do bosses is with torture mastery I prefer to keep Phantomize equipped. Just Phantomize will save you against Cyclops' Rock Fall and sometimes the Cave Troll Shout if you're struggling with it. For the spells we're bringing, it's going to be Curse of Pain. It's going to be Power of Sacrifice. It's going to be Hellfire. And then we can afford to bring Bolt of Darkness and Curse of Weakness as our final two spells. But they are not necessary to kill the bosses. They're just so that we fill up our spell memory at level one. On the Squire tab in Merchants, we can change our base gear. So let's unequip our falchion, our crystal ball, our cloth pants, our potion, and our torch. I want my potions to be on the left side by default with the torch on the right side. Just personal preference. I also want to equip a wizard hat for the headshot damage reduction. That's going to help in the rock four phase. And I'm going to bring a spell book on my slot one and a falchion on my slot two. So with all that gear set, we can now head on into the Goblin Caves high roller and get started. To locate the Cyclops on the 5x5 Goblin Caves map, we head over to the module that is two across and two down. It is this module here. This is where the Cyclops lives. So I'll meet you there. All right, so here we are at the Cyclops and I'll walk you through step by step on how to kill this boss. One thing to keep in mind is that this Southwest corner here is a reset spot. So just walk into this corner and the boss will reset if you're ever in danger and you're the only person in the room. So let's open up with a Curse of Pain and a Power of Sacrifice. And we're going to always move to the right using our D key and only our D key to move to the right. We can chuck out a Hellfire and make sure you don't cancel like I just did. And look, we're just honestly going around him to the right. Curse of Pain, Hellfire. Power of Sacrifice, Hellfire. Here comes a special attack. It's an eye attack. So we just run right past him like that. This is a double jump, then crouch. You can uh, do so while standing still. You can actually even hit him with spells whilst he does it. Followed up by the third special attack, which is the ground stomp. And once you get more experience with the Cyclops, you'll learn all the different sound cues that uh, predate the attack so that you can react to it before he even does it. Here we go. Oh. Someone's coming in to say hello to us. That's so great. All right, Hellfire's out. He's about to start rock fall, so let's get behind him for this and chuck our Hellfire out. Jump the rocks. You need to do that a little bit slower. There we go. Jump the rocks. Half a second. Jump the rocks. Half a second. Hellfire. Jump the rocks. Half a second. And there we go. We got through it. Just about. So now we can heal back up. Let's get away from him as he's going to do the ground stomp. So we'll just chuck our things out like this. We can do a double jump into a crouch. And there we go. Perfect. Get our curses back out. Get back to full health. Okay, so this guy just decided to kill himself. That's great. Honestly, I was a bit worried about what he would do next. And he just showed it. So we're just going to continue doing Hellfire into Curse of Pain, into Hellfire, into Power of Sacrifice until the Rock Force starts. Always just walking around him to the right to avoid his damage. Here comes the Eye Attack, so let's run right past him. And this should be a Rock Force starting very soon. Nope, Ground Stomp first. That's good, we got away. Curse of Pain in, Hellfire. The less damage you have, the longer this fight takes. And the harder the Rock Force stage is as well, because it's all about damage, the Rock Force stage. Make sure we got our Curse of Pain rolling into a Hellfire. And here comes the Rock Fall. So, Hellfire, wait, jump. Oh, we got hit. Make sure we're timing that jump. Perfect. And we got through it. 
It's a really hard jump to land, guys. If you're dying on the rock fall, do not be discouraged. Oh, he went straight into eye attack. Now we got hit by this. This is where Phantomize comes up clutch. We can Phantomize, and it does not hurt us with the Phantomize. Also, the rock fall phase is the exact same. The rock fall phase, we can Phantomize whenever we're taking too much damage, and uh, we will avoid the damage in the rock fall phase. None of his attacks can hurt us whilst we're in uh, Phantomize. So we're almost back to full health. He only has one more rock force to go. Here it is. Get ready. Jump. Good timing. Ready. Jump. All right. Hellfire. Jump. This is going to be him dying. Jump. There it is. Amazing. So he is now only a couple hellfires from death. Make sure you don't get hit by this stomp that comes up immediately afterwards. And then get ready to just pass a couple more hellfires out. One more maybe will do it. Perfect. Good fight. What did we get from the Cyclops? We got ourselves a Heater Shield and a Feathered Cap. So with that done, let's head over to the Cave Troll and now do the Cave Troll at level 1 as well. And now to locate the Cave Troll, we need to head to the module that is 4 across and 4 down. It's in the bottom right of the map and it has all of these bridges and the elevator and basically is in a straight diagonal line southeast from the Cyclops module. Let's head there. Here we are at the Cave Troll. Now, the Cave Troll is actually much easier to kill than the Cyclops is, but he has a one-shot attack, which scares a lot of players and gets them killed. The secret to the Cave Troll is all about our spacing, and I'll try and show what I mean by that as I do this fight. We're going to open up, standing on this north wall and running directly at his left hand. And then if he goes for a melee attack, we run away. If he goes for a roar, then we avoid the roar. So let's open up with a Curse of Pain. And then we're going to go for a Hellfire. We're standing really close to him as if we are intending to melee attack him. That's really important. Otherwise, what he will do is a raw attack, which he might do here. Now, to avoid the raw attack, we can do two things. We can either run past his hand and avoid it that way, but we have to react pretty quick to it. Or we can stand still at the edge of the raw and avoid it that way when he actually goes for the raw. Anytime he does this ground slam, we have to move away. So we can just run past it like this and then move away from him. That's one way to do it. Let me show you the spacing method. Spacing method is all about getting to the edge of the roar. See these lines? You want to be on the edge. And then as soon as that debuff is in the bottom right corner, you move away with your sideways key. Let me do it again. Edge of the roar and move away as soon as that debuff is in the bottom right corner. Those are the two methods for avoiding the roar. I think the safest way to avoid the roar is to just run past the cave troll. If you are good at timing that, that is the best way to do it. But all we need to do to kill the cave troll is move slightly to the left on all of his melee attacks, be inside melee range whenever he goes for an attack and then move away so that he doesn't do the roar. But now we know how to deal with the roar if he goes for the roar as well. And then it's all about just chucking curses out to keep ourselves healthy, chucking hellfires out to actually kill the guy, and Bob's your uncle. Both of these very viable uh, bosses to kill. Cave Troll way more easy to learn, I think, than the Cyclops. The Cyclops is very punishing. The timing of that Rockfall jump is very difficult to, to learn. If he does go for a charge, then we can avoid it if we're too far away with a jump. But it is definitely less safe. Let me show it again. Edge of Raw, and then moving away is that debuff hits the bottom right corner. I'll do a, uh, a, a, a a run past technique this time. And then we're inside melee range. Oh, we're not actually. So these are the two ways to avoid the roar. It's all about spacing this guy. You want to basically... Every time he does an attack, just move a bit closer to him and then move away. Move a bit closer to him and then move away. And that way he goes for melee attacks instead of phys uh, ranged attacks. You want him to, th to think he can hit you. you. Get a little game of uh, kind of mouse with him, you know? There's the Hellfire. There's the Curse of Pain. And there's the Death. Bottom's up to you, brother. That's two bosses killed as a level 1 Warlock in the same round. And look at this. We got rewarded with a lovely Magical Healing uh, uh, Coldest Tuning. All right, I'll show you how to kill Cyclops with gear, and I'll actually show you a different strategy for doing the Cyclops as a Torture Mastery Warlock, which involves Life Drain. Okay, so when I am running a geared Torture Mastery Warlock, I am running Anti-Magic, 
dark reflection and vampirism as well as torture mastery and spells wise i am bringing curse of pain but i'm also bringing life drain and hydra for healing and i'll show you how this is utilized in the fight to make things a lot safer we have hellfire and flame walker as well and i'll talk things through as a geared torture mastery warlock okay so here we are at the cyclops and the main difference in this fight is that i'm going to be using a life drain to heal off of the cyclops as well during the rock four to essentially try and give myself more uh safety during the rock four and avoid that rng damage that can kill me because the hellfires are doing way more damage we are going to cycle through all of these attacks much quicker so we should be getting into rock four very soon actually through only a couple of hellfire attacks and once we do we're going to put a hydra down we're going to hellfire and then we're going to life drain and then he will go out of rock four pretty quickly and that keeps us nice and healthy during the rock four animation we still have to move away from the rock uh from the stomp but we are less likely to get any of his other special attacks because we are just cycling through his stages way quicker than if we were naked level one he's less likely to do more attacks when he has you know less chance to do them so here comes a rock four hydra rock hellfire life drain and then that's it keeps us alive if you get hit by the rocks why go both torture mastery and uh life drain well, it's just because uh you already bring a hydra anyway typically to heal from or just to you know zone people out power sacrifice is never used in pvp and um healing wise doesn't tick very fast so we can out tick with uh life drain way quicker and get some really good healing during the boss fight which keeps us nice and safe see that was a huge rock fall there but we had the life drain going and we're going to get back up to full health really quickly so we can chuck that cursor pain out into a hellfire and he should be pretty much dead now with one more hellfire and then we can reuse the hydra and the life drain to reset and head over to the cave troll so i hope this guide helped you with killing both the cyclops and the cave troll on goblin caves guys the cyclops is a buggy boss all right rock four kills me even when i'm in very good sets i have a clip of me dying in tens of thousands of gold golden set it is just one of those phases that you do not know where the rocks are going to drop there's no markers on the ground and they do ridiculous damage so keep that in mind when learning that you probably will die to rock for a lot but if you can nail the timing on those jumps and get better at it it will become more consistent and bringing gear does get you through the rock four phase quicker meaning that you have more survivability in the fight uh, if this video does help you learn either the cave troll or the cyclops make sure to give it a thumbs up and check out this gear guide on warlock where i go through all the different stats and what they mean which you should prioritize for warlock i think it's really helpful